One of our goals this season is to help you get more out of life, more meaning, more fun, more of everything that truly matters, and that includes healthier, happier kids. My next guest believes even in this overindulgent world, there are times when kids simply need more and says they'll be stronger because of it. Joining me is Kristen Hodson, a licensed clinical social worker and therapist. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having Intrigued me. Intrigued with your spin on this topic, so giving kids more sort of feels counterintuitive to all of the parenting right. approaches and methods that we're hearing about, that kids are spoiled, they have enough, yeah. they have too much. Much. Where are you coming at from this? Yeah, none of us want entitled kids. At the end of the day, that's exactly opposite. But I believe if we give our kids more of the right things, then they will thrive. They won't be entitled. They won't be spoiled. But they'll be happy, healthy, responsible adults. So the key, more of the right things. More of the right is things. what we're going for. Kids may push back against rules, Chris, and you know that. But you say deep down, kids really do want parents who set limits and who establish boundaries. Yeah, that's the key of healthy relationships, our boundaries and expectations. And oftentimes we can think of boundaries as brick walls, but I think of them as guideposts. And ultimately, boundaries create safety. Kids need to feel safe. They need to have structure they can count on. So if we give our kids more of the right boundaries with some flexibility and fluidity, not just rigidity, then they can thrive because they've got, they've got that security to count on. So you talk about that flexibility. Let's take a boundary like bedtime. What does a healthy bedtime right. boundary look like in a So it would home? be in our home, we're going to start getting ready for bed at 7.45. We are actually in our bed at 8 o'clock. Now, does that always happen exactly? No, not necessarily, which is where the flexibility comes in. Mm -hmm. But they know consistently this is 745 in bed by 8, and that's what we're going for. It's not all over the place, so they can start to get into a sense of routine. You believe kids want more responsibility. Yes. Does this mean more chores? It can be. It can <laughs> okay. be. But we need to look at, as parents, if we're communicating to our kids, I believe in you, you are competent, you are capable, or if we're swooping in and doing it like, I love you and I just want to make your life easier. That doesn't necessarily help your kids. And if we want our kids to have the confidence, competence, and self-esteem, we've got to give them that opportunity to rise to the occasion mm -hmm. by unloading the dishwasher, by learning how to cook, by learning how to do laundry. These skills make a difference for them to then transition into the, the real world. But I'm hearing you hint at let it do them, let it do it their way. Yes, In a sense. which is hard. Yeah. But we have to teach them. That's the key is I hear too many parents be like, it's just so much easier. It can be easier, but then what does that look like in the big picture? I was amazed once I became a mom at the amount of conversation and time that's devoted in parenting circles to praise and criticism, yes. right? How important that, that balance is, that ratio is. But you say at the end of the day, if you have to tip one or the other, let it be to more positivity. Absolutely. John Gottman talks that we want the five to one ratio. Right, we want right. five positives to every one. But take the scene, the common scenario where our kids are playing well, they're not fighting, so we don't say anything because we don't want to disrupt it. The second they start fighting, we interject. They get our attention, but it's negative attention. So having the opportunity and saying, I love the way you're playing. You guys are playing so well. You're not fighting. Did you see how we had a car ride where we didn't fight? That is wonderful. And then our kids, they want that praise. They want more. It's, it's less praise and more noticing what's going right and spending more time so that they do more of that. That's ultimately what they want. You hit on a buzzword there, time. We know kids want more of our time, but yes. how is that time best spent? How can we best invest in that? It's building relationship. It's, it's love mapping. Again, John Gottman, love map of getting to know their world. What are they interested in? What's going on with their friends? And spending quality time to build relationships. That might be playing games. That might be reading a book with them and getting to know their world. It's that kind of time. You mentioned more limits, more boundaries, but also making your list more space. So there's yes. definitely a balance at play there. <laughs> because this can be, again, task-based and we can just schedule our kids. They need more time to just be kids. They need more space to be able to make mistakes, to learn and grow. They need space to be bored. So they come up with creative solutions and figure out and let their imagination go wild. They need more space to breathe in this overscheduled world. It's free as a parent too to look over this list and think of the places we can be more abundant in our yes. giving and in our offering. So I appreciate this topic so much. Where can Thanks, people Brooke. go for more of your insight? They can go to thehealinggroup.com. Thanks so much, Kristen.